Hello and welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. Today we will create a people counting system by using Y terminal, an ordinary ultrasonic ranger, and special deep learning sauce to top it off and make it actually work. We will also utilize Microsoft Azure IoT Central service to store the room occupancy data in the cloud and visualize it at on PC. Before we start, I'd like to make an announcement. All right, first let's understand the data we can get from ultrasonic sensor and how we can utilize it for determining the direction of objects. We can upload this simple sketch to wire terminal connected to Groove Ultrasonic Ranger and then walk in and walk out of the room. We can immediately see that for walking in, we get relatively high values corresponding to distance from the object first, which then decrease. And for walking out, we get completely opposite signal. Theoretically, we could write an algorithm ourselves by hand that can determine the direction. Unfortunately, real-life situations are always complicated. We have people that walk fast, uh, this makes a shorter curve lengths and slow, longer curve lengths. We have thinner people and people who are not so thin, and so on. So our handwritten algorithm needs to, be, needs to take all of these into account, which will inevitably make it complicated and convoluted. So we have a task involving signal processing and lots of noisy data with significant variations. What could we use for that? Hmm. 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 Oh, I know we could use deep learning. Either that or Sherlock Holmes. Well, I'll go with deep learning. Uh, we're gonna start by assembling the hardware, which is not really complicated in that case. What I did is that I took Y terminal and um, ultrasonic ranger and then put them put them on this uh, wall mounted thing. It was actually originally a uh, picture frame, and then I put the uh, three arm velcro behind it to conveniently put it on the wall and then take it out when I need it to do some adjustments. Let's create a new project on Edge Impulse Dashboard and prepare to get the data. I already have a lot of projects here and uh, the one that uh, corresponds to our current uh, project that we're making is People Counter Raw and People Counter Spec. I'll open People Counter Raw right now. For gathering the data, since we do not need a uh, very high sampling rate, we can use Data Forward tool from Edge Impulse CLI. Upload this sketch, which I put in the article, since, since it's a relatively small sketch, uh, to your wire terminal. And um, what we can see here is that basically we send the data, the ultrasonic distance data, uh, on the serial monitor, filter out all the values that are higher than 200 centimeters. Um, it's because the ultrasonic ranger, if uh, there is a timeout, so the sound signal going but never returns, uh, it actually gives uh, a measurement of something like 500 centimeters, which is not something that we want. And instead, I, I made an if condition here that if distance is less than 200 centimeters, then we send the data. But if it is uh, more than 200 centimeters, then we just send minus one. So you'll just need to upload uh, this sketch to my terminal. Let me connect it. All right, and let's see the data on the serial monitor right now. Not available. I think it's just connected to my virtual machine again. Disconnect. Minus one, minus one, minus one. So that basically means that uh, it times out and you see that there is basically the distance to the ceiling here. Okay, and then, okay, now that's, that's, that's correct. But as you see, I'm, I'm holding my palm here at about 50 centimeters from the ultrasonic ranger, and you see that sometimes 
I do get the minus one values occasionally. So that's what that's that that's why I, I did say that the signal that we're dealing is is noisy. And now to collect the data, let's go to our Ubuntu virtual machine and use Edge Impulse Data Forwarder. Uh, now, to learn more about how to set up Edge Impulse CLI and Data Forwarder protocol, you can watch the first video of TinyML series. Just in a few words, uh, to use Data Forwarder, Edge Impulse Data Forwarder, you will need to send the data on from any device with, with this baud rate, and um, you would need to send data in packets. Each data point in packet is separated by a comma, uh, or a tab character, and then each data packet is separated with a new line character. In this case, I only have um, one point in each packet, so this is why I basically just do serial print line distance or serial print line minus one, because it's only one data point. Um, all right, so let's type data edge impulse data forwarder and I also type clean to make sure that I'm connecting to the right project because I already used this tool before so I'm going to type my email and my password all right I'm connecting it to people counter raw detecting data frequency and then I'll call them you asked for ultrasonic Perfect. So now if we go to data acquisition here, then we'll be able to see the uh, device wire, uh, sensor with one axis called US, frequency and sample links. Um, so what I did is that I recorded about 1 minute 25 seconds of each category, which is out, in, and non. Um, for each sample, I would record for 5 milliseconds, but then I trimmed the out and in samples uh, to just 1,500 1, milliseconds. As you'll see here, for example, if I open this sample, so this one is 1,500 milliseconds. How I did the trimming is basically I pressed the split sample button. And then if you have 5,000 five, five milliseconds uh, sample, then you'll be able to choose 1,500 milliseconds segment that contains the data point. Remember that variety is very important in the data set. So make sure you have samples where you or other people we walk fast, walk slow, run, and etc. Um, for non for for non category, which we have here, for example, apart from, let me just show you a few more samples here from non category. I can do it. So filter and non. Right. So uh, for non category, apart from uh, from data samples where you have nobody walking in and nobody walking out in a data set like this one this is just one straight line with reading minus one no object in front of ultrasonic sensor at all uh, it is a good idea to include samples that have person just standing close like this um, to the device and also walking beside it to avoid any movement being classified as in or out as you see for example in this data sample the Distance values are almost the same everywhere, um, so it means that either somebody is standing or walking near the device, but not getting near or further away from the device. When you are done with data collection, create an impulse. Press on create impulse, and I set the window length to 1500 milliseconds. 
and window increase to 500 milliseconds. I already explained these values in the previous video, so you can have a look uh, at the previous video or the article. In general, for this application, 1500 milliseconds is more than enough to register a person walking in or walking out. For processing blocks, we only have two blocks this time to experiment with. There would be uh, raw data and also spectral analysis and possibly spectrogram blocks. So I guess three all in all. Um, flatten block will erase all the time related information uh, from our data samples. So it's going to render it completely useless. Um, now spectral analysis block applies fast Fourier transform to data samples, converting signal from time domain to frequency domain. So while fast Fourier transform can work for other types of signals, such as sounds or accelerometer data, in our case, the frequency of the signal actually doesn't matter that much, because what we really have and what we only really care about is that if the signal is uh, decreasing with time like that, or it's increasing with time like that. So it's not really, so it's not really something that we can see well in the frequency domain. I did the experiment where I applied both spectral analysis and spectrogram blocks to the data, but I did not get satisfactory results. Even with spectrogram, which we, which as we learned in the last video, multiple Fourier transforms on your data, then basically just put together in a graphical form. Uh, where, as you see, the y-axis is frequency, and then x-axis is time, and then the um, the color the color here uh, corresponds to uh, amplitude of the frequency. So I tried the spectrogram, and uh, in the end, I wasn't able to get accuracy higher than about 79-80%, which is still fairly low. And in that case, uh, there is a lot of confusion between, between in and non, and also uh, between in and out. And the winner, once again, is raw data with scaling plus 1D convolutional neural network. I tweaked the network architecture a little bit, which I used the so-called expert mode, which basically standard Keras code, um, to achieve 92% accuracy. Let me show it to you. Okay, 92% accuracy. And uh, while there is still some confusion between in and non, so basically it means that sometimes it uh, doesn't detect person coming in, overall the accuracy looks better than with other processing methods. And for the neural network, I just, uh, the only change I did here is I changed the strides in max pooling 1D from two by default uh, to one. Now, how good is 92% accuracy that we have here? And what can be done to improve it? 92% is fairly good as far as proof of concept or prototype, but horrible for production. For production, your mileage may vary if your application is critical and somehow used in automation or decision making. You don't want to, you don't really want to have anything below 99 something, 99.99%. Um, think about something like a face recognition for uh, payment or identity verification. You really don't want uh, your system to make errors at all or not, 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 not to say that you wanted to misclassify every eight people of 100, which is what we get with 92% accuracy. Are there any ways to improve the accuracy of the system? And by system, I mean all of that, the model, um, the sensor, and so on and so forth. First of all, we could use the uh, uh, better sensor. Ultrasonic sensor is cheap and ubiquitous, but unfortunately, as we saw, it is not very precise and gives a lot of noisy data. We can get better data by using Groove TF Mini LiDAR module, such as one of these that you see on the screen. We could get more data, definitely, because one minute, uh, one, one minute and a half for every class is 
by no means enough. And we could place the sensor lower at normal human waist level. I'm 181 centimeters tall and originally I pla placed the sensor at the level of my chest, which is around here. Um, and then I discovered that my shorter and slimmer colleagues, uh, they actually, the sensor always missed them. It, it wouldn't register anything when they were walking by. And finally, two are better than one. So having two sensors at slightly different places uh, will not add too much data. We actually only have 31 uh, data points in each sample as of now with one sensor, but might increase the accuracy. To explore more interesting ideas, a built-in light sensor, which we have available in wire terminal, can also be used if placed appropriately. Once the model is trained, we can perform live classification with data from device. To deploy the model to wire terminal, go to, go to deployment tab, choose an Arduino library and download it. Press on build button and download. So it's going to download the, this folder, then you can copy to your virtual machine. Okay, let's switch off the data forwarder now. Now, Arduino libraries, and let's paste it here and extract. Perfect. All right, so what we're going to do next, um, go to seed Arduino sketchbook, and here you will be able to find um, people counting continuous dot in a sketch, which I'm going to open right now. So this time we will be using continuous inference example to make sure that we are not missing any important data. The first thing you'll, you'll need to do is to make sure that the, uh, this first include statement that includes your uh, edge impulse library and the model uh, actually corresponds to the name of your uh, to, to the name of your project. So if you remember, in my case, there was people counter raw inference. So if you have a project with a different name, um, then you need to change that to match the name of your project. Make sure that you have all the libraries installed. For example, I do not have the library for ultrasonic sensor. And let's try compiling again. So if you remember in the first video of the series for the inference, we would gather all the data points in the sample and uh, then perform inference and then go back to sampling. That means that when feeding the data to the neural network, we would pause the data collection and lose some data. This is not optimal and we can do better than that. So we could use either DMA or direct memory access or we could use threading or multiprocessing to fix this issue. Um, basically, for with direct memory access, you would uh, collect the data from the sensor and put it into memory without involvement of the CPU. And for threading, you would use threads, obviously, and for multiprocessing, you would use um, a separate core if your MCU has uh, multiple cores. Why terminal MCU has only one core, so multiprocessing is not an option. In this case, we will use FreeRTOS and threads. What is going to happen is that during the inference process, FreeRTOS will pause inference for a brief moment, collect the data sample, and then go back to inference. This way, the actual inference will be a little, will take a little longer time but the difference is negligible for this particular use case. So let's have a look at uh, exactly how it's implemented in the code. We see that um, we declare two handles for two tasks here, and then in setup function, we have the uh, X task create uh, two times for these two separate threads. Um, then the first thread with lower priority uh, is uh, the inference thread, and then the test that the thread with higher priority is data collection thread. Then we call the vtask scheduler function, which uh, this function will never return, and will schedule the tasks, the threads that we have. So in this way, 
the loop function, which is empty here, will never get executed, and all the work will be done in threads. Uh, let's have a look at the simpler thread right now. It's a read data. Basically, in an infinite loop in the thread, what we do is uh, we determine the time for the next inference here. Then we roll uh, the data buffer with NumPy. And then we read the data from the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, exactly the same way as we did when we gathered the data. If uh, the distance is higher than 200 centimeters, we set the distance to minus one. And then we put that distance variable in the data buffer. And then we just make this thread to wait till, the, till it's time to perform next sensor reading. Now, in run inference background thread, what we do is that first we wait until there are enough samples available to perform first inference. We declare a structure that smoothens the output result. So if you remember, we perform inference uh, once in 500 milliseconds. So in that case, because we have a window of 1,500 milliseconds, every sample will be performed inference on three times. Um, and then we take the result that has the highest confidence across these three inferences. So for example, if we have highest confidence for out label two times and highest confidence for non label one time, then we declare that the label for this inference series is out. All right, so let's do some testing. We can see that the model works, but all in it by itself right now, it's not actually suitable for applying in the real world. Let's add two more elements to make it into a full-fledged application. First, we're going to add uh, data upload to the Azure IoT Central to store the data and have pretty graphs displaying, uh, displaying the room occupancy. And then we're going to use LVGL, which stands for Little and Versatile Graphic Library, Graphics Library, um, for making a simple graphical user interface. So let's open that uh, sketch. It is called People Counting Azure Central LVGL. Um, then you will see that the resulting sketch is actually um, quite long. It's about 721 lines and uh, it has three concurrent threads running at the same time here. Um, so basically I spent about two days making the machine learning model work and two more making the graphical user interface Azure and Edge Impulse work together simultaneously. All good fun. Now, here is a quick recap of steps you need to make, uh, you, you need to do to make it work with IoT Central. Um, first of all, you can open another sketch that I have in the same repository. It's called Y Terminal Azure Central. So as you see, it's, it's an example sketch for sending the data from inbuilt sensors, such as accelerometer of Y Terminal to Microsoft Azure IoT Central. Um, this sketch is actually based on Benjamin Kabe Azure SDK Arduino example and uh, Seed Japan office fork of uh, Benjamin Kabe's repository. Now, both Benjamin and Seed Japanese offices um, sketches use platform I.O. Uh, with Visual Studio Code. While it is a great framework, which adds a lot of convenience, my tutorials are based on Arduino ID, and I did not want to change the framework uh, just for a single example. So porting the code from VS Code to Arduino was actually quite straightforward. So basically what I did, I put all the files from include folder, which, which contains header files, and all the files from source folder to, um, to the sketches folder. And I also renamed uh, the source file called main CPP. Uh, here I renamed it to something something dot INL, which is uh, Arduino ID sketch file format. Um, and then you will be able to see all, all these files in one project just like this. 
and then you'd also want to put the library, the Azure SDK for C, uh, this library. So you'll want to put the Azure SDK for C, which contains uh, the source code for that software development kit uh, to Arduino IDE libraries folder, just like that. Okay. And then you will want to change uh, the header files definitions in signature CPP uh, from using embed TLS to using C embed TLS dot H, just like this here. And then it will compile just uh, like a normal, regular Arduino IDE project. You will need to install a bunch of libraries. The list of them you can find in the article. Uh, make sure that you do that. And after you have all the libraries available, the sketch will compile and you will be able to upload it and see the result. In order to configure Wi-Fi credentials, you will need to press uh, the three buttons simultaneously on top. Uh, of the Y terminal and then uh, press the reset button like that. Then on the screen you'll see uh, a line saying in configuration mode like this. So you'll be able to open the serial monitor and it will display this prompt. So you'll need to uh, you'll need to run set Wi-Fi SSID to set the Wi-Fi SSID, then set Wi-Fi password to set the Wi-Fi password. Uh, and then you will need to run set AZ IOTC. And here you will need to enter. First, you will need to enter the ID scope. So um, to get the uh, to get to get your Azure IoT credentials, you will want to go to Azure IoT Central web page here, and then press on Build. So I'm going to create a new application here, which is called people counter. And for URL, I'm going to use people counter of intermute. Um, actually, I already have the application with the name. So that's why it says it's already being used. So the application URLs must be absolutely unique. I'll choose free and then press on create. So here it is. Um, then to set up my device for the first time, I will need to go to administration and then um, device connection. Here I will be able to see two things. The first one is the ID scope. We'll copy it and paste. And then I will also go to SAS IoT devices and copy the primary key, which I'll paste here. And then I will need to enter the name of my device. For the name of the device, actually, uh, what we're going to do is uh, first we're going to create device template. I already have one, but you'll need to press on new and enter the following, follow, following, uh, the following categories. We have entered left and number of people, which have names. These are topics that we'll late, you will later need to specify in your Arduino sketch. Uh, so the names for these topics are people in, people out, and people count. And then also I have created uh, views, one view that has number of people graph, which gets information from number of people and left entered graph here. And then after that, you can create, you can, you can go to devices and press on new. Um, then you can leave this device name as randomly generated and then press on create. And then you can use this device name to paste here. All right, and then you press send, and then you'll be able to uh, connect to Azure IoT Central. I already have a device here, so instead I will actually use this name. You will need to put the carriage return here uh, to make sure that the command is sent successfully. You will see the set connection information of Azure IoT Central successfully, um, if you are indeed successful. And after that, you can restart your device, just like that. And then on the screen, you'll see connecting to, first connecting to your Wi-Fi network. Actually, we can open the serial monitor and see. Then it subscribes to device provisioning service and gets the address. All right, and then we'll start seeing send telemetry. 
Um, then if you go to devices, uh, this particular device, and you see we do have the, uh, uh, the, the data coming in in real time right now, which is the accelerometer data. And now what we're going to do next is to open the sketch that combines edge impulse inference with, uh, with LVG, LVGL and Azure IoT Central. Uh, despite this, this sketch is really long, but it's not really that complicated. What we did is that before we had uh, this Azure, Azure IoT Central uh, connection boilerplate stuff. So we left that one and uh, added, added the edge, in, edge impulse inference things um, and threads here. So you see this part is really similar to what we had before. And for example, MQTT Connect is a function where we check if uh, our MQTT client is connected to Azure IoT Central. And if it's not, we reconnect. Um, then we also added update screen uh, function where we update the labels, the on-screen labels text uh, with new values. And in the loop, in the loop, we send the telemetry. So send telemetry function we had it in our previous Azure IoT Central sketch. And here we just modify it slightly. Um, so instead of sending the accelerometer data, we send uh, people count, people in and people out. The hardest part here was really making sure that everything works normally in each separate thread uh, and does not influence other threads. So after you uploaded the sketch, you can see the end result on the screen. Since you already entered your credentials in Wi-Fi password, you do not need to enter them again. What you'll see is the simple graphical user interface with uh, people in and people out values and also uh, the total amount of people that's supposed to be in the room right now on the bottom of the interface. And on the top of the interface, you'll be able to see the current system messages. The application that we made today with Wire Terminal, while might not be ready for production yet, but with some additional work, can actually be used to measure the occupancy of the rooms with Wire Terminal. Try it out yourself and see the result. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next video of the TinyML series. Until the next time!